a lot of people skip this that doesn't make any sense to anybody. Then you're going to have a website that is going to get you the results you want. Most people don't do these three steps and making sure that it is conversion focused design. It's gonna make you money. I'm Alicia Conlon Hurd, co-founder of the post-click agency Persuasion Experience, and I've done over 450 websites, landing pages, and funnels. Today, I'm gonna to unpack my proven step-by-step -step strategy with examples so that you can take your website from an embarrassment that drives your website visitors into the hands of your competitors and turn it into a high converting sales machine. Look, I'm speaking from experience. We just overhauled our ugly, embarrassing website that we had for the first 12 months of business and launched one that we're really proud of. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we did it. But first, why is this important to know? I'm going to be talking about website strategy. Well, here's the problem that I've seen with thousands of websites that I've worked on or done CRO audits for. Most people slap together a website, they rush it, and then they expect it to make money for. They don't think about the strategy, they just launch it, and then everybody gets a say and everybody gets to change things until they have this absolute Frankenstein abomination conversion monster that doesn't make any sense to anybody. The thing is, your website is effectively like your brick and mortar store. It's online though, right? Which means it's available on every street of every country all around the world. But when somebody does a fit out in a actual physical brick and mortar store, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars to get it right. And they actually care about it and pay attention to it. But when it comes to the website, they get some random El Cheapo web builder from Fiverr to create it for them. It goes live, they hate it, they're embarrassed by it, it doesn't make any money, and they just end up redoing it again in a couple of years. So when I work with my clients or when I did my own website, I wanted to make sure that I got it right. Your website is often the first impression somebody has with your business. So step number one to get this right is to physically write down the goals and objectives that your company wants to achieve from this website. Your website is an asset to leverage within your company and you wanna bring it to life with intent, not leaving the success of it up to chance with some dude from Fiverr. You wanna take control of this asset so you can leverage. The thing is though, most people wanna get straight to design, right? That's the sexy part. And that's like trying to build a house on sand because you don't have the foundations of what you're actually trying to build. So all you're doing is putting all these sinking parts on top of each other until you end up with that Frankenstein creature at the end and you're embarrassed by it. So the first part is to write down the main goals that you want to accomplish from this asset you are creating. So for persuasion experience, we had two goals. The first goal was acquisition. We want this to generate leads for us. In the future, we want it to generate product sales, but right now we want it to generate high quality leads and clients. Number two was that we wanted to have a website that built authority. So we're gonna have separate funnels that we push a lot of targeted traffic through and separate landing pages. But a lot of people are gonna end up here that find us on organic social or referrals. And it still needs to persuade them that we are the best, motivate them to take action, but also demonstrate that we're an authority in what we do. So this is a, a more basic way of what we did it. But literally all you have to do is what your company wants. Two to three goals, right? Acquire leads, build authority. How can we do that? Well, for us, we can acquire leads through a lead magnet, through a strategy session, or through a contact page. Step number two for the strategy is to identify your core user groups and what they're looking for on the site, right? So while your website is an asset for you to leverage, you still have to think about the end consumer in mind. You still have to think about, well, who's actually using this and why are they coming here? So if you think about it like your brick and mortar store, people walk into a shop and they're looking for something or walk into a business and they're looking for something. So if you don't have what they're looking for and you're just pushing your agenda and it doesn't align with their agenda, 
well then they're going to bounce. So we want to match these up. So literally just write down who are your core user groups. Think of the 80-20 rule. You can't make everybody happy. So what's the 20% of people that reduces you 80% of your revenue? Now write down that user group, who they are, and then bullet point every single thing that they might want to do or find on this website. And once you've done that, you can literally just have another column that looks like this. What do users want? So for persuasion experience, again, this is footnoted version. They wanted to learn what we do. They wanna check we know our stuff. They wanna ask questions or they wanna get in contact or they want some free information or help. And they wanna find out how to work with us. There was a few more than that, but let's just say those are the key things for the purpose of this video. Now, once we understand that, then we can take the information of what are our goals, why are our users here, and we can start to map out the structure of the site. That's step number three for your website strategy. So you can see here, we got services, results, learn about us and contact. And when we mapped those out, that matched what does PX want and what do our users want? They weren't mutually exclusive. We both want to achieve the same thing, but I need to enter the conversation in the user's mind and not come across weirdly pushy or trying to shove them into something when they're not ready yet. So we can see here on the website, we have our services, we have our results, we have our learns. This is the free training, the about us and the contact. Once you know what you want to achieve from the site, what your users want to achieve from the site, you can align that and start to map out the pages that are going to achieve those goals. And most people don't do these three steps. And honestly, when I make bigger websites, it is more complex than this. But for most people who have simple websites, this is all you need to do. And if you just spend some time thinking about it, then you're going to have a website that is going to get you the results you want. It's gonna make you money. So once we've done the strategy, the next phase of your website is your copy. And again, a lot of people skip this and they move into the design, but design is led by copy, not the other way around. Why? Because your offer and your copy is the thing that motivates somebody to take action. All your design does is complementary to that core strategy and to that copy. For example, if you had a salesperson would you spend more time figuring out what suit they needed to buy? Or would you spend more time training them on the scripts that they need to know? I hope it is the scripts that they need to know. And that's the same for your website. We don't spend more time making it look pretty because that doesn't do anything. We spend more time turning it into a conversion machine and it all starts with the copy on the website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through each of the pages on our site because each of the pages have their own strategy and serve their own purpose, right? Let's walk through it. So the purpose of your homepage, it's like your directory. The homepage, it doesn't convert. That's not the purpose of a homepage. The homepage helps people to find what they're looking for. I think of this as my front desk person or my admin assistant. Their job is to direct people to the specialists or to the salespeople or get the user to where they need to go. When we're doing a homepage, you also figure out some of your universal elements that are going to appear consistently throughout the site because you don't want a site that's different on every page for the sake of being different, right? Like you want it to have universal features and panels. For example, this is a universal section. This is a universal section. This is a universal section. So once you start to think like that, what is a universal section, then you can make the rest of your website easier. Now, the other thing when we did the homepage, we thought about the hierarchy of the messaging and the sections. So pretty much the only thing on the homepage, because I've already identified what is the strategy and what do people care about and what do I care about, that's in my navigation or my site structure or my site map, right? That means I shouldn't have any other weird crap on my homepage because I want people to get to these pages. I've identified. And the main thing I want somebody to do is take up our strategy session. So that takes prominence on the page. 
for the first couple of panels. Then I've given them the option to find these pages to learn what we do, because that matches with my goals and the user goals. This is to learn more about us. What is persuasion experience? Check out our case studies. Oh, well, the user wants to know that we know our stuff. They wanna see the results we've got. And it's pushing them to what we've decided we want them to see. Lead magnet, we wanna acquire leads, they want free information. See how it matches both of our goals and we're not just putting stuff on here for the sake of it to tick a box or because we don't care. This gives more information, it's a bit more sales copy. Again, it's a different way to get them to book in that strategy session. We have the free training because that's a page we identified. Anyway. What we're doing is we're just always pushing them to these pages. There's not any information that doesn't need to be on here. This is just all to fulfill the goals of PX and the user. Not mutually exclusive, but you need to figure out how to deliver them in such a way that it suits both of the goals of the user and the company. So that's the home page. it's your directory. When we go into something more like a landing page, Let's do landing page for landing pages. The purpose of this, it's like your salesperson, right? The job of this page is to motivate and persuade somebody to take action. So this job for this page is to get somebody to book a call. And the strategy of this page is very different to the home page because it's more of a sales page, right? It needs to tap into the problem, agitate, give the solution. And I'm getting them to take the next step in their journey. I want them to read this and book in a call. So when you do your landing pages, each of your services should have their own landing page. Then you will have something like a category page. So make it easy for people to filter by how they search. And then our site, the other different page was the about us. Now with an about us, you want to explain who you are, why you're different and build a connection. And so a lot of people just write crap stuff on their about us pages or like don't care. But a lot of people, a lot of users will end up at this page. So you want to inject personality and story and you want to build a connection and a relationship with your website user and have call to actions to get them to do something as well. But don't be afraid to inject personality and stand out and show why you are different. That is why, think about it in your own experience, if you're going to an About Us page, what are you trying to figure out? You're just trying to learn a bit more about what they do, where they've come from, why they exist, their mission, about the founders, about the team, etc. So once we've done our strategy, once we've got the site structure and we understand the goals, and then we have our copy done for each of those core pages, we've written the copy, then we can do the design. Now where I would usually start is wireframing out the UX of these pages and making sure that it is conversion focused design, not just stuff slapped together to look pretty, it's stuff that is purposefully created with intent, right? So there's lots of things when it comes to design. You wanna have a clear color scheme. You wanna have color hierarchy. So you wanna have your primary, your secondary, your tertiary colors. What we like to do on our sites, which you can see, is that the only instance this pink appears is for the call to action. And the only instance this blue appears is when it's information we wanna draw the eye to. And that's the only time that those appear. And that helps us to build a hierarchy of information on our website. Then here is my erratic mood board, right? But what I wanna do is show the designer what we want and what we don't want. So we had a very, very clear vision in our mind. We wanted neon stoic. That was the flavor of the website. And that's because with our brand, it's like a blend of ancient psychology and stoicism that's been around for thousands of years, but layering into that more of a quirky creativity and science. So we wanted this old schoolness of the statues and the godlike and like this persuasion element mixed in with neon futuristic science as well. So that was the brief. And when I made this mood board, I was particularly obsessed with American Gods at the time, but we were very, very clear on what we wanted the design to look like, what we didn't want it to look like. And remembering that when you make a mood board, your goal is to inspire the designer, not tell them how to do their job. That's why you pay them. So we worked with an awesome agency called Black Peak to do this design. 
And obviously their job is made easier because I'm pretty clear on what I want and what I do not want. But most people can't articulate this. And when it comes to design, it's better to show, not tell. So you can just go to things like Dribbble and you can start to swipe things that you like and search for things that you like and show the designer, who is a visual creature, how you want the site to look. Now, the biggest thing that you need to make sure the designer does is that any imagery that is on the page is there to complement your copy and your offer, not distract from it. So a lot of times designers will get pretty crazy in what they want to do and they're very creative people and it looks really, really great, but is it going to distract people from what they're doing there? So that's just one little thing to be mindful of when you're working with designers is that they are in fact creating conversion focused design for you. So we've done strategy, we've done copy, we've done design, and now we're into build. And I'm not gonna talk about this too much because there's plenty of videos on the internet. What could you use? Well, we use Webflow for our website, but you can use many, many other builders, whatever, right? If there was only one solution that worked for everybody, there would only be one CMS builder or one web platform. So you have to research and find which one is best for you. When it comes to the build though, you wanna be extremely clear on how you want the website to functionally work. And the way to do that, the easiest way, is to write your tech scope. So you write a separate document briefing for the developer, and there's a fancy way you're meant to do it where it's like, if somebody clicks this, this shall happen, and you're meant to say the word shall. But if you can just literally write on the homepage when they click this button, when they do this thing, and tell them how you want it to do, otherwise they are guessing. And what I'm trying to teach you here, which I probably could have been clear at the start of the video, is that prevention is better than cure. Website projects are typically a headache, a nightmare, and they blow out. But it is your responsibility as the business owner or the project manager or whatever it is to make sure that you are foreseeing these issues and being really clear on what you want. And if you can do that, your team or your resources are going to win instead of acting in silos. So the takeaways team, spend time on your strategy and building the foundations for success. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with an epic fail that doesn't make you any money and doesn't service your business goals. Your website is an asset to leverage. Treat it as such. Number two is your copy. This is what is going to motivate people and persuade them to buy and do business with you. So put time and effort into this. Pay an expert if you need to bring them in, but critically think about each of your pages on the site and what copy needs to go on them. Then number three is your design. Make sure you're clear on how you want that to look and then give a brief to a designer of what you don't want, but what you do want and show, not tell. Finally, stage four, your build. Get your tech requirements super, super clear. You can be super basic about this and just say, when someone does this, I want them to do this. So go through the design of the page and just note down in bullets how you want that to work. And team, after doing over 450 web projects, that is the most simplified version for you to get from A to B and create a website that makes you money. Let me know what you thought of today's video or if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Alternatively, if you have a website and you want some pointers on how you can make that even better and you're brave enough for me to shoot you a quick Loom video with some recommendations, pop that into the comments. Otherwise team, thank you so much for watching today's training and I'll pop up some videos right now that I think will help you hit your goals even faster.